my name is Roger Watson and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Nurse Education and Practice, which is published by Elsevier. In this session, I want to address one of the sets of major reporting guidelines for medical research, and these are referred to as the CONSORT guidelines. CONSORT stands for the Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials. And these were first derived in 2001 and then substantially revised in 2010. And currently it's the 2010 versions which are available on the CONSORT website. I say versions because there are various extensions of the CONSORT guidelines and these are constantly being developed. And that was the major change in 2010. Until that point, the set of CONSORT guidelines were generic for almost any kind of design. Then it was realised that some adaptation and flexibility was required, so the main set of guidelines were developed specifically for the individually randomised two-group parallel trials, which are the most simple and possibly the most common type of a clinical trial. And then a set of extensions were developed, and as, as I say, still being developed for other designs and for other types of interventions and for other types of data. So there's almost uh, no design or intervention for which you can't find a set of guidance. For example, under the designs, and this is not a, a comprehensive list by any means, you can, you can check the website, but there are designs uh, covered under uh, cluster trials, non-inferiority trials, N of 1 trials. For example, there are other designs as well. Uh, you should check for your particular kind of design. And the kind of interventions that are covered separately include things like uh, non-pharmacological interventions, uh, herbal interventions, uh, Chinese herbal medicine, and uh, social and psychological interventions. And then there's a set of guidance for different types of data that are required. For example, data on harms and data on equity in trials. So as I said already, reiterate, there is almost no design for which there isn't uh, some set of guidance and you should check. Now, when to use the consort guidance is, uh, I would say they should be used at uh, any stage in the process of designing, executing and reporting a clinical trial. They are primarily there for reporting. They are reporting guidelines and they're there to help improve reporting of trials, uh, to produce standard ways of reporting trials and to ensure that certain international standards are adhered to. But I would strongly advise anybody who's thinking of designing a clinical trial study that they should uh, refer to the consort guidelines at the beginning of that process. That will make sure that you don't miss anything out and that you include all the aspects that you are required to in your trial and for your particular kind of design so that you can subsequently and ultimately report it properly according to that set of guidance. So do consult the consort guidance very early on uh, anyway, but also check that there hasn't been an update for your particular kind of design. So it's very important to uh, consult them early and to keep them in mind and then to use them when you come to reporting your trial. Most uh, reputable uh, publishers, most reputable journals will not accept a clinical trial for publication unless it adheres uh, to the consort uh, method of reporting. Mm -hmm.